Hello everyone, my name is Ro, and this is Alice the Adventure Cat, one of our two cats that travel with us full time in our RV behind us. She's squirmy. <laughs> She's a little squirmy. And with RVing season quickly approaching us, less than a month away, we've been noticing a lot more questions about RVing with cats. Now, whether you're going to be just camping for the weekends and you want to bring your cats with you, or you plan on full-time RVing and you want to know what to do with your cats and you have some fears going along with that. So. In today's video, we're going to be answering all those burning questions about RVing with cats. Right, Alice? Yeah. The number one question we get about RVing with our cats is where do we put the litter box? And as you can see, it sits right here next to my side of the bed, but it's facing out. Now, we didn't originally have our litter box here. We really like this configuration because it's easy to clean. Um, the top, the front of this just hinges open. I can um, scoop the litter really easily. But what I really like is because we also have a dog, we've set up this sort of silly barricade right here. <laughs> um, we have a big heavy thing of litter here to hold all of this in place so that Sweetie doesn't push it forward to get closer to the litter box. We have this up so that the rabbits can't get back here because they turn into turds when they can get back here. And then we have our box of shoes right here to act as an anchor to, again, hold it all in place so that Sweetie can't get into the litter box. Now, some of you may be wondering, why do you want Sweetie in the litter box? For those of you that have never owned dogs and cats at the same time, well, dogs are gross, okay? And <laughs> Sweetie is no exception. For some reason, she just loves to eat cat litter. And by cat litter, I mean used cat litter. So this is our configuration. We really like this. It's worked for a long time. We've had this set up for about three years. When we first hit the road though, we had this litter box actually facing the other way. So the opening was facing that way, but it was on that side of the bed. And we liked that because Sweetie couldn't get to it no matter how hard she tried. But the problem we were having is because the cats didn't exit out towards the rest of the RV, they exited back towards our bed, they would actually jump onto the bed and track litter in the bed. And that's not good. <laughs> now for us, we like this configuration because it works for us. I really like how easy it is to clean. However, we've heard of many other ways that people store their litter boxes. One of the major ones we've heard about a lot is that a lot of people keep their litter boxes in their bathtub. And while that sounds like an awesome solution because now the litter box is in the bathroom with the other smelly stuff, you know, your RV toilet probably smells a little bit. It's an excellent spot for it. And it's probably a lot easier to clean too. It just doesn't work for us because we end up using our shower and bathtub all the time. And then another thing we've also heard about are some people will cut a hole in one of their cabinets and put the litter box inside of a cabinet so it doesn't take up any floor space. Some of you may be wondering now, does this smell sitting right next to our bed? And no, it doesn't. And it's because I religiously clean the litter boxes every other day. And it makes it so that it does not start to smell in here at all whatsoever. And if you religiously clean your litter box, no matter where you have it in your RV, it's not gonna stink. When it comes to our cats tracking litter around the RV, it can be a little annoying. And I'm sure that anybody that owns cats knows that. Cats just track litter everywhere. It gets stuck in their toes. And if you have your litter box in one room, you might find litter all the way across your house somewhere. It's just how it goes. Now in an RV, it's important to mitigate the amount of litter that is spread around because it can be a pain to clean up. And so what we have done is we actually have a nice litter mat. It's actually made for litter boxes. You know, we have a litter mat down here and for the most part, it catches a lot of the litter out of their paws. And it's amazing. We used to not have a litter mat. We used to just have a towel down there and it has made a massive difference. And we also have our shoe box right here. You can see full of shoes. And I'm sure you're probably able to figure out why we have a towel on top of it. And it is because as the cats come out, they do track more litter out. And so this towel catches it and keeps it from going inside of our shoes and kind of getting everywhere. And when I clean the litter boxes, you know, we shake all this out and we vacuum down there to keep it nice and clean. And David sweeps the RV every single day. And so our RV is kept nice and clean, but be sure that when you live in a small space with cats, they are going to get their litter everywhere and it's gonna be important to keep it clean. Our second most commonly asked question is, what about in the truck? And that question normally revolves around the litter box. 
do we have a litter box in the truck? Where do we keep it in the truck? Do our cats use it? Are they okay using it? What about Sweetie? Does she get into it in the truck? So yes <laughs> to all of that basically. Here is our litter box for the truck. It always stays in here. When we're traveling it is in this configuration. So it is on top of the rabbit's travel cage and we have this towel underneath it so that when the cats crawl out of the litter box most of the litter gets caught in this towel and it doesn't fall into the rabbit's cage on top of them or anything like that. Now Sweetie also sits in the back here so it can be really difficult to keep her out of it. We have to be really vigilant and we keep it very clean so that she really doesn't have a chance of even if she tries to sniff around in it there's nothing in there for her to get. But <laughs> that has not stopped her from trying on many, many occasions. So something that I want to do is I actually want to create some sort of a barrier right here on the other side of the rabbit's cage so that Sweetie can't get into the litter box, but I haven't come up with a good solution yet. Now, when it comes to traveling with the cats in the truck, some of you have asked, do you have a carrier that the cats sleep in? Um, it's be, it'd be a lot safer to have your cats in a carrier, but for our cats, they really, really stress out in their carriers. They associate their carriers with going to the vet and they both despise the vet. So if we were to put our cats in those carriers, they would cry and bang on the doors constantly of those carriers. So they just are free roam in our truck while we're traveling down the road. And by free roam, I mean that Butters has her spot where she just sits on our center console in the truck and never moves. And Alice sleeps with Sweetie on the bed back here. And this is Butters. She is almost 10 years old. I think we only have about a week and a half before she's 10 years old. And when we first hit the road, she was six years old. And so she wasn't a new kitten, you know, she wasn't one like Alice where as soon as we got them, this was just their lifestyle. And so Alice is super used to traveling with us. And one of the major questions we get is how did you get your cats used to traveling in your RV and or your truck? And <laughs> while I don't have an expert um, opinion for you because it was actually pretty easy for us. Um, hopefully sharing our story will help some of you guys have kind of an idea of how to get your cats used to travel. And for Butters, what we did is exactly what we did in our house. We put her in our RV and she just got to explore. We didn't overstimulate her. We didn't follow her around. We just let her be in the RV and then we would take her back in the house. And we got her used to the RV that way. It was kind of like just a second place for her. And when it came to traveling in the truck, it was actually really easy with Butters because when I lived by myself in my apartment and I would go and visit David, um, or we would take, or I would go to his parents' house to hang out with them, Butters would come with me. And Butters loved hanging out with David. She loved visiting his parents because they had a cat that she got along with for the most part. <laughs> and so riding in my car from my apartment to his parents' house, which was 10 miles, they were nice short trips and every single one of them ended in a good time for her. You know, she would never went to the vet at any of those um, rides, you know, she would, so at the end of them, they were always a positive experience. So in order to get your cats used to riding in a vehicle, it's important that you make the vehicle itself a positive place for them to be. That's about all the advice I can really give you. Alice was a kitten when we were, when we got her, um, and we were already traveling on the road. So the only way we had to get her used to traveling with us is she would just sit in my lap and everything would be just normal. <laughs> so we, we didn't push butters when we were traveling in the truck at all. She always wanted to sit on the center console. If the center console is flipped up, she just throws a freaking hissy fit, old, old cat anger, <laughs> all of that. And uh, so that center console always has to be down and she has her spot, but she's happy and content that way. As for the cat food, they have their own sealed container under here. I really like this. I actually bought this when I lived alone in my apartment for Butters. It holds an entire 30 pound bag of cat food and then some. And it has just this, this really easy to use latch right here. And it has a seal on the inside so that no um, <laughs> scents leak out so it doesn't attract bugs. Um, when I lived in my apartment, I did have an issue with ants coming in and getting in her food when it would just stay in a bag. And this has been the perfect solution. And ever since we hit the road, no bugs in the food ever whatsoever. And uh, as you can see, the cats are very interested under the bed. <laughs> and then down here, we have um, the cat's um, wet food storage and also the dog's wet what food storage. What have you done? <laughs> that toy. <laughs> and also some toys. And um, this is one of the cats, and admittedly, Sweetie's favorite toys. Um, 
sweetie is a cat at heart. Um, <laughs> oh, now we can go. Oh. <laughs> sweetie. <laughs> Okay. You gotta put that away. <laughs> I have to put it away. I'm sorry. And down here is where we keep all of their wet food. And we normally buy a nice big container of wet food for the cat, for the cats and for Sweetie. You goober. <laughs> and we store it all down here. Now we also keep all of their treats down here. Unless we have an opened bag of treats that we use all the time. In which case, it might be a little silly for some of you. But any treats that are opened, we actually keep them in our microwave. Because we don't use our microwave very often. <laughs> <laughs> well, you see how they all act. As soon as we open the bed, oh. as soon as we lift the bed, they're all like, what? What is under there? So, um, just to make treats easier to access and so we don't have, like, a cluster of animals in our way while we're trying to get in here, we just keep the treats that are currently open in the microwave. They're easier to get to. Anyway, but normally, they're in here, right? Is it? What is? What is that? Oh my gosh. No. Do not pull that out. Oh my, <laughs> oh my god. That thing. She is spastic for that toy. We have to keep it under the bed. <laughs> or she just, oh my gosh. It's, it's too much. Sweetie, this is <laughs> supposed to be about the cat. Oh, dang it, she just blasted into me. <laughs> I know that a lot of you that are thinking about traveling with your cats are mainly worried about your cats darting outside when you open the door. And that is something that we're actually really afraid of too. Now our kitten Alice, she has no desire to go outside unsupervised without someone helping her out the door. Literally, I think she's afraid of being outside unless she's in a backpack or being held. Butters on the other hand, she's a darter. And um, that's why when she's outside, I've got her harness on. But if we open the door, and she is on the counter next to the door and she doesn't have her harness on and you're not paying attention as you step outside she sees your shoulder as a platform to use to bounce off of to get outside so butters is kind of a turd you can't spell butters without butt <laughs> but she's actually an excellent cat outside. She doesn't really need her harness. I put it on her because I am not that great at following her around. And she is welcome to roam all that she wants, even without me holding onto her leash, because she is a very good cat. And when she is afraid of being outside or she is ready to go inside, she will actually come back to you and put her paws up on you and literally beg to go back inside. Look at her now. She's just chilling. She's just hanging out. It's pretty cute. <laughs> I have no fear for her. I don't even have to pay attention to her. She is too afraid for the RV to be out of her sight. So we could let her outside unsupervised, but we do everything we can to make sure that she's not outside alone. She doesn't get to go outside alone because, you know, there are hawks around here. There are coyote around here. There are things that prey on small animals like cats. And that is something that we're too afraid of to let her go outside alone. However, despite Butters being the one that we trust the most outside, she is not an adventure cat. <laughs> she will not go hiking with us. She will not go in the backpack at all whatsoever. And we cannot lead her around on the leash at all. The leash is just so that I have a hold of her in case she gets scared. <laughs> We got her that whole time. She's only still just right there. <laughs> <laughs> just in the trees. You having fun? You having fun? And I can even approach her. And she's fine. It doesn't scare her off or anything. So she's just, she's always been a really good cat, but she's kind of a scaredy cat. And whenever, oh. Oh, she's and, done. And she's done. Yep, just there like that. Just like that, we're done. We're done, you ready to go inside? And that's it. That was all she wanted. <laughs> so freaking cute. I love this cat so much. She's such a good kitty. However, if we have to do anything in our RV, like we recently replaced our mattress, and if our front door has to be open for any extended period of time and neither one of us can watch Butters in case she gets out, we actually lock the cats in the bathroom. <laughs> Look at what she's doing. <laughs> I love you too. She's such a baby. Yeah. 
Now, this right here is our filing system, and one of the things that we always make sure we have on hand are proof of vaccination records for our pets. It's really important for dogs, especially if you're planning on staying in an RV park. A lot of RV parks won't allow you to have your dog with you if they're not up to date on their vaccination records, or you can't prove that they're up to date on their vaccination records. And while I haven't heard of any cases where that would apply for your cats as well, because they don't typically go outside and interact with other, other pets, um, it's still important to make sure you keep those on you because if your cats need to have anything done over the road, like Alice has had to be treated for worms and um, she got really, really sick one time. I know you guys were with us through part of that. And Butters has allergy issues where, you know, we have to give her shots from time to time when our allergies flare up. And so we keep their vet records on hand as well as any additional <laughs> veterinary paperwork we obtain over the road. And for Butters, we actually had to... Well, sort of. We sort of had to learn how to give her her allergy shot, because it is a shot. And luckily, though, David actually used to be a vet tech at a veterinary office, and so he takes care of all of that. <laughs> but I do have to hold butter, so I had to learn how to hold her, and we have to keep all of her medicine on hand for in case that ever has to happen. And so if you do plan on traveling with your pets, especially if you're going to be um, being full-time with your cats, you're going to want to know how to give them any shots that they might have to take, especially if it's something chronic like diabetes or allergies like butters, you know, you're going to want to make sure that you can do that yourself. And then finally, just like with dogs, you really should make sure that your cats are microchipped. If you are worried at all about your cats darting outside or really anything. <laughs> if you are worried about your cats getting lost at all whatsoever, get them microchipped. Now, while a microchip isn't going to for sure bring your cat back home, it at least can give you the peace of mind that if someone does find your cat, if they do get out, then they have a microchip that can be scanned in order to find you and return your cat back to you. However, you're going to want to make sure that you keep all that information up to date and that they have a good phone number to contact you by. Something we found incredibly important when we lived in our house, and it was just Butters, our only cat, was that she needed a place to get away from Sweetie. And in our RV, it's the same situation. And so we kind of have cat beds everywhere. This is one of them, and Alice and Sweetie get along wonderfully, so this is the one that Alice chooses to lay in all the time. This is Alice's bed. But we also have one on our desk. Um, what else is a cat bed? Our entire bed, our bed, is a cat bed. Uh, the sink in our bathroom is a cat bed. Uh, there are some towels on top of the rabbit's cage. That is a cat bed. Uh, for some reason, the hard stove top is a cat bed. <laughs> Got the boxes on either side of our bed that have our clothes in it. The cat's laying that. Those are cat beds. Oh, our chairs, our office chairs, those are cat beds. Anything that the cats can get into that is either elevated or super soft, they're going to get into it. And so if you have designated cat beds for your cats, they're going to be a lot happier. Now we actually only <laughs> bought these cat beds, what, like six months ago maybe? I don't know why it took us so long to get them. I think it was just we were worried about where we would put them and space and stuff like that. But our cats use them every day. These are their primary beds and they love them. We've got one on the desk where Sweetie can't get to Butters at all. That's Butters' bed. She loves it. And then Alice lays here and sometimes Sweetie comes and bothers her, but it's okay because Alice loves her big doggy. It's kind of a warm day, but Butters is right next to the bed. That counts. Yep. <laughs> if it wasn't such a warm day, she'd be in that bed. Oh, I'm sure she would. And if the bathroom was open, Butters would definitely be in the bathroom sink right now. I've tried my best to go through and answer as many of your guys' questions about traveling with our cats as I could find, and I hope that I've answered the main ones you guys have had, and I've helped give you some insight as to what it might be like to travel with cats and ways that you can make it safe for your cats to live in your RV and also safe from your cats darting outside and all that good stuff. But there is obviously a star of our channel, and she does not appreciate not being the center of attention at all times. And I guarantee we're going to have a lot of comments from you guys down below asking us where is the video about specifically traveling with dogs. And don't you worry, we have heard you. We have heard you. It is in the works. We're going to have a video all about traveling with dogs, where we keep all of our stuff for Sweetie. All of that good stuff, right, Sweetie? Yes. But for now, we're going to go ahead and call it a night. And we will see you guys in the next video.
Bye. Good girl, say bye. No. <laughs>